We have a very, very special guy on today. The one and only Anton Crayley. Oh, yeah. Founder Happy to be here. Of Dropship <laughs> Lifestyle. What is up, man? Not much, not much. Just uh, back in Austin, getting some work done. Happy to talk about this whole thing we've both been doing for a while now. Yes, crazy. Okay, so yep. this is a long time coming. And um, for my regular fans, I've obviously, I've mentioned you many, many times. Anton is one of the top two guys that got me out to Thailand in 2014. If it wasn't for Anton, I don't know if I would have started my digital nomad life as soon as I did. So for people that don't know, let me, let me go through the official introduction. <laughs> Anton Crayley, serial entrepreneur for more than a decade, finding success, building and selling multiple seven figure businesses. And in 2013, started Dropship Lifestyle. Thank God for starting that. To teach people how to create profitable e-commerce businesses by leveraging high-ticket dropshipping. And that's what we're going to talk about today. And yes. his course, Dropship Lifestyle, was voted the best e-commerce course by Shopify in 2018. So just last year, Shopify had their like own like Shopify awards or something. And he won best course. And there's over 10,000 students enrolled in this course from over 25 countries, helping them find freedom through entrepreneurship. Of course, if you're a fan of my channel, it's all about uh, freedom entrepreneurship, lifestyle entrepreneurship, whatever you want to call it. I came out to Anton's first dropship lifestyle retreat in Chiang Mai 2014. So you started it in 2013. How did you decide to start Dropship Lifestyle initially? Yeah, so just right before that in like 2012, I, um, I sold a network of stores I had and I basically went from working probably on average like five hours a day to only having a few stores left that I was managing in like an hour a day. So I had a ton of free time um, and I just kind of went on, on Google like most people and I was like, all right, let me try to find other people that maybe have sold businesses or that are running e-commerce stores, see like if there's a community I can maybe learn from or meet up with. And uh, what I found back then was the warriorforum.com, which if anybody doesn't know it, like it totally tanked in terms of popularity, but it was basically like a message board where people would try to sell each other stuff. And uh, that was my first experience to like seeing what people were talking about. And I realized there was just a ton of bad info out there. So right. I was like, you know what, let me, uh, let me just comment on some threads in here. And I just started kind of sharing information, answering questions and uh, people responded to it. They were like, Oh, this makes sense. You know, thanks. And um, that kind of just led to me being like, you know what, people want to know this stuff. Let me make a series of videos. Mm -hmm. And that was the, the first version of Dropship Lifestyle way back then. So uh, let me just pull up right here a few photos from the retreat in 2014. So yeah, for, so for people that don't know, I joined the course in 2013. And that is largely because of Johnny FD's YouTube channel and also his podcast. I actually took a uh, just regular vacation out to Thailand in 2013. And then I got inspired to like live abroad for a year. Went back home, was like, how do I live abroad in Thailand? Um, found Johnny's channel and then he started saying he's doing this job shipping thing, uh, get Anton's course and where I was like, Oh, so this is my first online course that I ever bought. And then Johnny basically announced, or you guys both announced that there's yep. going to be a retreat in Chiang Mai, October, 2014. And so earlier in the year, Parker and I, uh, my best friend, we were both on this kind of journey together. We put that on the calendar and that was our excuse to initially come out to Thailand. I always talk about um, like conferences and like going to like, uh, you have these every year and Johnny has the Nomad Summit every year. Uh, yep. in Mai. And so for many people, just having the excuse to go out to Thailand or go out to wherever the, the retreat is, like your past few have been in Southeast Asia and your next one's gonna be, uh, you had one in Hawaii and now you're doing one in like Mexico. Um, but- yeah, Prague, little, Prague this year. Oh, Prague this year. Yeah, yeah, we're going to Prague in September. Oh, let's go. Okay, yeah. so that's coming up. <laughs> So yeah, just the excuse to get out there for a lot of people provides just as much value, if not more than the actual information. I thank you, Anton, from the bottom of my heart for having this idea uh, to have this retreat. I, I talked with Johnny, like he's been on my podcast a couple of times. It was kind of your guys' both uh, like mastermind. Uh, yeah, it, 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 
I think probably where you heard about it when it was announced was it was me on Johnny's podcast back then, where yeah. the idea came from just us having a conversation about how cool it was to just go diving for a day and sit on the beach and have a beer and why aren't more people doing this? So yep. yeah, that was like not only the announcement but the the ideation of the the first ever retreat. So yeah, yeah that's right. Imagine. It was you guys in the pool, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> just hanging out. I remember that. Okay, yep. awesome. Um, so yeah, anyways, guys, that was the blast off to my whole YouTube channel. The guy, he's finally on my podcast right here. Uh, we're going to get into uh, high ticket drop shipping uh, in a second. And by the way, I met up with another uh, 2014 uh, drop ship attendee, uh, Chris Chu. Uh, he was on my podcast uh, just a couple days ago. And so oh, it's cool. nice. like, um, and also like, it, like so many guys that came to that conference, like still really good, really tight today. Like, mm -hmm. I call it like the Chiang Mai class of 2014. Yep. <laughs> so like, like not only like did it start our, our new journeys, but we also made like a lot of great friendships from you guys uh, bringing people together. So I think it's an awesome thing uh, with the retreats and obviously uh, they're going every year. Um, so yeah, let's get into, uh, for people that um, might not know about high ticket drop shipping yet, obviously, you know, my audience, my core audience is like aspiring digital nomads, you know, people yep. who are trying to, you know, make this uh, freedom business real. Yeah. Break down high ticket drop shipping for okay. people, you know, kind of the, the cliff notes version. Obviously I'll share my screen and you obviously have your website dropshiplifestyle.com where you have um, basically a free training of where it breaks this thing down in more yep. detail. But for people that don't know it yet, yeah, kind of share, kind of share the method. So it's, it's a super basic you know, concept to understand. Mm -hmm. um, so basically all it is, is we sell products online. We sell physical products. And what happens is people come to our websites, they place orders. And then instead of having a warehouse or using a fulfillment center, like I actually used to do when I first started, instead of doing that, we're selling other people's products. So we're selling for other brands. And what that means is we don't need inventory. We can sell basically as many different products as we want to. And once we get a sale, then the supplier, we use the word supplier and brand kind of interchangeably but once we get a sale that order goes off to the company that actually makes this thing and they ship it direct to the customer so that's mm -hmm. drop shipping basically hands off as far as the again warehouse side fulfillment side ideally return side it depends from a supplier to supplier basis and then high ticket just means we're selling expensive products so mm -hmm. average order value we like it to be a thousand dollars or more main reason not that you can't sell less expensive products it's just that you know if you're going to be running your own store and you're going to be selling inexpensive products there's going to be a lot of work involved in terms of dealing with customers to make it profitable um, on the other hand i know like you know are you still on amazon still selling on amazon yep so like if you're going to sell, you know, smaller ticket products, then I think that's a great place to do it because Amazon is dealing with the customers. They're shipping it. You know, if someone wants to return it, like that's going through their systems. But um, we don't sell on Amazon with drop shipping because well, we're really not allowed to when we sign supplier agreements. So we're selling on our own sites. We're the ones that take the money. We're the ones that run the ads. We're the ones that make sure orders are processed. And the goal is to make as much money as possible with as little effort as possible, meaning yep. we don't want a thousand orders a day. Yep. Nice. Okay, cool. And then let me um, share the screen again. So um, the title of this is, and I really like this, like how to make $300 just from one sale. Um, mm -hmm. So when you're talking $300 from one sale, that means it would be like a uh, item from your Shopify store that sells for like a thousand bucks. Yeah, um, probably like a thousand between 1200 around 1, there. 1200. So the margins would be, you know, around like 20, 30% or something like that. Yep. Trying to get around 25% on average. 25% on average. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, the way, the way I would uh, kind of explain this is it's kind of, you know, having, having your own store and then you're basically listing um, products that obviously you don't have in your own warehouse, you don't own, but you're basically just like doing the marketing for them. You're doing, you're getting customers for these companies and you're yep. basically and getting, you're basically getting like a sales commission. Pretty much. Yeah. Except, you know, and that's the difference. Like, you know, sometimes people that are new to this are like, oh, why don't I just do affiliate marketing? And uh -huh. with affiliate marketing, let's just say, you know, I'm at a stand-up desk now. So let's say I was selling this. If mm -hmm. I sold it and I was working on the dropship model, then I would sell it. Again, I get that money from the customer and then I can control my costs, right? So yeah. the cost of goods sold, I can't control that, but I can get a better shipping rate. I can pay less for traffic and get better qualified traffic. So my margin varies. And, you know, again, we try to average like 25%, but we have some items where it's 40%, 45% some 50%. So you have that control. And when you're an affiliate and you're just literally earning a commission, then it's usually fixed. And if you're an affiliate for a site like 
Amazon, unless you're really moving volume, you're probably around 5%. Yeah. Um, you don't have to do things like ship the items. You don't have to talk to customers, but you know, you're, you're set at a, at a fixed, uh, commission. Yeah. Yeah. The Amazon affiliate uh, program or Amazon associates program, whatever. Right. Um, so that's, Something totally different. That's um, you get the link to Amazon store. It's like three to six percent or whatever. Um, yep. Okay, cool. And then what I would be wondering right now is, so you mentioned traffic. How do you get traffic to your sites? What are the best uh, methods that are uh, working nowadays? Yeah. So we do all different sources. Um, we can go through like an overview of some of them. Uh, the thing that works best, again, for the our goal with these stores, which is to make as much as possible without having to do all this work and lay out a bunch of cash. The thing that works the best is to get people to your site when they're ready to buy. So that's why just like it was 10 years ago, our highest converting source of traffic is still Google product listing ads. Those are the things you'll see on Google. If you go there and search for a product, you'll see a product image, a price, a store name. Um, those are people are paying to be there. So we pay to be there. We negate all general keywords and we get those super specific searches. So that's still number one way to get people in. Uh, we also do a lot of different partnerships with influencers, if you want to call them influencers, nice. uh, I consider, you know, businesses to be influencers also. So not just people on Instagram that, you know, post videos all day, but websites that have authority already, we nice. pay them to advertise. We can do collaborations with them where they write articles about us or about our products. So that's nice. another way to bring people in. And then, you know, a lot of what you'll see online now in 2019 with drop shipping is just Facebook, Facebook, Facebook. Yeah. And we do, we spend a ton of money on Facebook ads because it works, but we use that later on in the buying cycle. So yeah. we're trying to bring people in through Google, through Bing, through different partners we work with. And then once they find us, we're trying to get them back through Facebook and Instagram. Yes. Uh, yes. So crucial. Um, so he's talking about Facebook retargeting. Mm -hmm. And so uh, for people that might not know, this is someone that visits your uh, website, visits your store, or even your checkout page that's tracked through a Facebook pixel. And then you can reshow that product to someone on Facebook. And so that's one of the things that uh, I didn't do when I was starting in 2014. And I look back, I'm like, how am I not doing that? Because, you know, I've been, you know, four, four years now in the you know, e-commerce game and they say the money is all in the retargeting. Yep. Um, you yep. Know, I, and I'm on the online course game myself and it's um, especially with the higher ticket uh, stuff. You know, people mm -hmm. don't buy until they see something like multiple times. So it's all in the retargeting. And so definitely. Key thing yeah, and especially now, you know, like everyone's on their phone. Like we, we do spend a little bit less in mobile. Like we adjust our bids to, on Google to spend a little bit less and on Facebook, but like so many people will come back later and it's because, you know, they're online at Starbucks and they're like, Oh, let me look for you know, stand up desk. And they see it and they're like, Oh, that's a good one. Then they go to work or go on their computer and they Google it again. They're not going to remember that they found our website and click through it because we do have competition, right? We're selling the same things that five or 10 other stores are selling. So we need to, once we get them originally to our site, we need to do everything we can to make sure when they are ready that we're in there, like in front of them nonstop yeah. on mobile, on desktop, everywhere they go. Yeah. Nice. Um, okay, cool. Let's get into, um, some of these bullet points. Um, yeah. Shopify product page hacks for mm -hmm. higher conversion rate. Yeah. What are some of the, uh, the tricks nowadays? Yep. Yeah, so that's another thing, right? You get people to your site and then you don't want them to just be like, oh, okay, let me, you know, go see who else is selling this. And even if they do, you want them to have a reason to be like, well, I remember this other site had a better offer or was more appealing for some reason. So, um, you know, different things we do and this isn't new, the first one, but trying to use urgency somehow. So whether that be that they can get free shipping for a limited time or a discount for a limited time and not just saying, you know, sale ends Friday, but putting a date and a time that they should take action by. So trying to get them to make a decision sooner than later, that still works great. I don't think it ever will not. Um, another thing we do is estimated arrival dates. So one big thing that people think about, especially since most people buy things on Amazon, you know, they know when they're going to get it, right? They're on Amazon. Okay, I'm going to get this thing Thursday. So we put that on our website as well, where they're looking by the add to cart button. It'll say estimated arrival date and it dynamically updates for when it should possibly arrive. So that yeah. helps people to know because if they're on a website and it doesn't say anything and it's a random website, they just found it on yeah. Google. They want to know like, when it's yeah, going to exactly, show up. Exactly. So that's a big one. Um, something else we do is try to make like the whole experience as minimal and as optimized as possible. So we're not distracting people from the goal 
which is check out. So you'll see some websites that have like, you know, their, their header menu will be like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube links. And it's like, why? Like you have someone on your website. Do you want them to go to Facebook or do you want them to buy? Yeah. So we, you know, we have social pages, but they're not front and center. So the main links we have are to our best selling products, to our shipping and returns policies, uh, to our price guarantee policy, to our contact. So the things that a buyer would need and to put in front of them, um, you know, other things to optimize live chat has always been huge. It still is yeah. people don't like calling and they want answers sooner than later. So, um, definitely have that on your website. And if you're worried about who's going to handle it, just download the app on your phone and you know, someone messages your site, you'll see it in your phone, respond like you were texting a friend. Nice. Um, yeah, I'll give a couple more, just uh, tabbed product pages. That's, that's, I don't know if that's a technical term. But Tab, we try yeah. to yeah, give a customer everything they need on the product page without having to click away. So yeah. uh, I mentioned we do link to our different policies, but on that page, what's our shipping policy? What's the return policy for this product? Put that right in front of them. Um, reviews always have been huge, always will be huge. So we focus yeah. on that. And then also offering bonus gifts. So, you know, again, if we're selling a $1,200 item, let's just say stand up desk. Maybe I'll say, you know, buy this from us and I'll include like a, I don't know, I have this thing in front of me. If people watching the video, it's like a wrist rest that probably costs $5. So I'll right. say, you know, buy from us, you get like this is included and just a way to stand out. So again, the goal of the whole conversion thing is to give customers everything they need in one condensed place, which is that product page, and have them want to choose you over other people. So yeah. urgency, free gifts, and then all the info they need to make a purchase decision. Nice. Um, so what about uh, top Shopify apps to improve bottom line? Are, are some of those the same? or Yeah. Uh, kind of. So the apps that we use to do this all for uh, for reviews, we use stamped.io. Um, I would probably, I don't even know, it might've been called something different back in, in 2014, but it's uh, it works you know, with Shopify. It's in their app store. They have a free version. But what's cool about that is it allows you to get uh, images from customers. So if you're selling something like visual, you could say, hey, you know, can you leave us a review? And we'd love to see a picture of this thing. So you know, you're selling like a skateboard like hey can you take a picture of yourself you know doing a trick or something right then they just send it in so yeah we uh we love stamps.io for reviews another nice. one that no not enough people do i shouldn't say no one does but not enough people do especially when they're starting is uh using clavio for email marketing so that's one thing i wish i did sooner there's tons of different email marketing tools but for e-commerce clavio hands down the best they have oh. a, a really deep integration with shopify so like Anything that could possibly happen with a lead or a sale on your website, you can have an automation built out. They have a free version. It does get expensive as you get a lot of contacts, but it's by far the best. So uh, Clavio, Clavio for that. And then Privy, we're still using them to collect emails on our site. So things like exit intent overlays, if someone tries to leave and it says, wait, you know, enter your email and find out how to get 10% off or something like that. So we use Privy for that. Uh, again, free version, more than enough. And then for live chat, we use, I don't know how to say it, Tidio. I think Tidio, Tidio, <laughs> T-I-D-I-O. There's all these weird names, but yeah, yeah that's, uh, I think, like three or four that everybody should be, should be using. Okay, cool. Something that comes to mind with live chat is um, have you – uh, tested out one that uh, integrate integrates with like Facebook Messenger and yeah. like can you because because that way like you can have them on like a, a messenger bot like auto yep. reply or yeah, auto that, uh, follow up yeah and that that one does it integrates with Messenger so however anyone wants to contact you it comes to the same dashboard and whether it's you know you if you're starting out or a VA they can go in there respond to everything oh that's so money okay yeah, yeah I yeah. definitely do that one yeah I've been playing around with messenger bots lately and uh, it's uh, quite fun stuff. Okay, cool. So um, I have next bullet point, um, keys to success in 2019. Um, but I want to reverse a little bit. And um, if I were watching this for the first time, I'd be wondering about uh, how do you choose what to sell? So um, yeah, what are the common uh, kind of methods uh, in 2019 for niche selection? Yeah, so probably again, like a lot of the fundamentals don't really change. Um, you know, we still obviously expensive is a big thing. Um, so the high ticket product price point, we still are looking for things where the potential customer doesn't have any brand loyalty. You know, I'm, I keep mentioning this desk because I'm at it. But if I wanted a stand up desk, like I did, I went on Google and I typed in stand up desk. I didn't care who made it. So yeah. trying to find things like that. Um, also you want to find things that customers almost have to go online for. So whether it's because they're hard to find locally or it's hard to find 
exact thing they want locally and uh you know something more specialized i guess is a good way to put it like mm -hmm. colors or sizes or just something that's not uh, sold in normal stores so it draws people online i recommend doing that and then another thing you want to look for is are other people selling what you already want to sell and if it's anything that's evergreen, then the answer is yes, you'll be able to find competition. That's yeah. a good thing. There, there are, you know, there, after what, I started Dropship Lifestyle 2013, I could think of one person that's made money from, and I don't know everyone's stores, I don't know everyone's journeys, but I could think of one person that made money from a trend. So they got into a, a niche when it was like this new thing. They got a bunch of suppliers, they got government contracts, they made money from the store, they sold it, they did great. But that's one out of, you know, thousands of people that I spoke to that are making a good amount of money from their businesses. So um, I would say don't worry about trends more so than something that's evergreen, that customers have brand, uh, no brand loyalty, and that's relatively expensive. Okay, nice. Real uh, briefly, what does it look like once you found a niche and you want to find um, suppliers or brands? Um, mm -hmm. What are the what are the methods? Are people still picking up the phone and calling? Or um, yeah, yeah. Start start with Google. So you know, yeah. free. Just go on Google and whatever that thing you're thinking of selling is, just search for it. And again, you want to see who's selling it. So you're not searching for the thing you want to sell and a keyword like dropship suppliers. You do not want to do that. You'll only find middlemen that warehouse stuff themselves and mark things up. So just search for the product type, try to find websites that are selling it already, and then see what brands they're selling for. So maybe you find a desk website that's selling for 10 different companies that make these things, and then find those company names, go on Google again, find those companies' websites, and look for a phone number, call them, say, hey, I'm calling from antonsdesks.com, who can I speak to about setting up an account? So really just, uh, it's a lot of, a lot of upfront work, I would say. There's a lot of like market research and manual time that goes into making sure you have a good idea, validating it, building the website, getting approved. But that's what's going to make you stand out from people that go on Google and search dropship suppliers and, you know, pay a company 80 bucks a month for access to products that they'll never make money with. So yeah. a lot of upfront research. Yeah, for sure. As is any business it takes a lot of upfront market research is uh, so, uh, so crucial. And um, as, as we're talking about calling suppliers, I just, I keep flashing back to the, I was at uh, our small one bedroom studio apartment. Um, and I went outside um, on the small little balcony. I was sleeping on the couch in this little apartment for like a year. And I was, we, me and Parker were just grinding. We had our own drop shipping stores. Um, and I just remember those calling suppliers days, man. It was, uh, it was a, a learning experience, but you know, it was this, it was the start of my e-commerce journey. Like, so mm -hmm. e even though, you know, I, I'm not doing the high ticket drop shipping anymore, it was like an e-commerce university. I learned so yep. many things about just like building the Shopify site and the contacting suppliers and doing the market research and like spreadsheets. So it was like a little, yep. uh, build a, build a little business, actual project, you know, like yeah. in, in university, they'll like teach you all these concepts, but there's no like, go build a business project. And so that's what this right. was. Right. And it, it's funny, like you mentioned earlier, how people are still connected from the first retreat ever. And it's kind of like that, like every year. And it's funny because everyone's connected still and they're not all running drop shipping stores. You know, some of them are, some of them have sold theirs already. Yeah. Some of them are doing that in addition to something else. And that's why it's funny. Like we call drop shipping a gateway drug almost because it gets people in, you know, gets you that education and yeah. make some money. And maybe you want to put a bunch of time into and see where you could take it. Or maybe you want to mm -hmm. flip one, or maybe you want to, you know, go sell on Amazon and make a YouTube channel and do whatever else. So yeah. it's a good way to, to get introduced and actually, you know, put your time into something worthwhile rather than just watching videos. It's like, okay, I'm building along with it and then have something to show for it. Then have that education to take along with whatever the next thing is. So yeah, yeah that's, that's awesome. That's yeah. Happy to yeah. And like, this was my first kind of online course and obviously, um, you know, it ch changed the trajectory of my career and I'm, um, I'm all, I always tell people, you know, they want, they're like, Riley, I want to learn. I'm like, well, there's two ways of doing things. You can either watch a lot of YouTube videos or you can buy an online course um, mm -hmm. to have everything like laid out in an organized step-by-step -step format with all the details. Like I don't see really any other ways to do that. Like there's, yeah. there's tons and tons and tons of YouTube and YouTube's great, but like to have everything condensed down um, like in an organized format like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Probably saved us like so much time uh, on our journey and like everyone is teaching different methods. So anyways, and I'm like, now I'm making my own 
like yep. uh, online courses. I'm just like such a big fan of the education revolution, like I call yep, it. I'm yep. always like using that hashtag, and I just love it. Um, these alternative educations, I'm calling it. Um, so, uh, anyways, yeah, getting um, towards the the last section here. I have anything else you want to talk about, and maybe tell us about your um, your upcoming retreat in Prague and what what yeah. your retreats are like. Yeah, so um, I guess, yeah, we've been doing them now. It's crazy. This is going to be the sixth one that we've done. Like you said, we've done some in Thailand. We did one in Mexico, one in Hawaii, one in Bali. This is our first year going to Europe, so it's going to be in Prague. And um, just a cool way to bring people together, get them to meet in person rather than just see names on Facebook all the time. So, uh, yeah, it's just that's always a good time. But I don't know, anything, I guess, to, to say to anybody listening, if you are, like, getting started and you're in that phase. I mean, it's good. You, you know, you found Riley already and you're listening into this and like, just know though that there are opportunities to just go like he did. He just went to Thailand and yeah. figured it out when he was there. Um, I think that's like one of the, the coolest things ever. I lived out in Asia for like four years and the connections that I made out there are so much stronger than ones that I've made. You know, I live in Austin in Texas now. I'm, I'm here most of the year. And like, there's, you always hear, oh, there's so many entrepreneurs and so many people to connect with. And it's true. But the type of people you'll meet out in Asia at these events, at these co-working spaces is just totally different. And like, that's where you could really find your people to maybe build a business with or grow alongside of. So, um, yeah. you know, find a way, find an event and just go. It, it changes yeah. everything. Yeah, getting around those like-minded people, that's, uh, you know, that's the magic. That's where the magic really happens. And so I, I commend you for not only, you know, building this whole course, and uh, I like to call it like an online university, um, you know, around, you know, entrepreneurship and really helping um, people get started on that journey of entrepreneurship. Um, but not only the online course, but um, creating these um, retreats to get like-minded people together. Uh, I always say, like, on my podcast, my videos, like, infinite value, uh, that you and Johnny have brought like so many um, thousands and thousands of, of guys and girls uh, all around the world. So awesome. And um, yeah, Anton, he's, you know, he's a guy that, that I totally look up to. He's got the office there with dropship lifestyle in the back. Like, uh, you know, I'm, and now I'm trying to build like uh, my own like digital nomad university and like help people on their same path of entrepreneurship. So I remember when you opened the office like a few years back and me and Parker yeah. were like, wow, Anton's big time now. He got an office. Yeah. Like, he's got a yeah. I was like, what? wow. I, 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 I do appreciate that, but I'm going to tell you, so like the grass is always greener, right? Like yeah. we, we came back because I was hiring so many people from the States and they were moving out to Vietnam where I was living. And I had an office in, in Saigon. It was a coffee shop that went out of business. We rented it and we were oh. all moving out there. We were working from that office. And then I was like, I don't want to get arrested. Like, I don't think I could do this. So yeah. we came back here and uh, now, now our team works pretty much remote. We have quarterly meetings here. I get work done here because I like it. But yeah. yeah, it is good to have a space for yourself. Like I, I always say like it's so much easier to be creative when you have you know, your designated space and you don't need to find where to plug in your laptop and see how the Wi-Fi is. So I think there's a good mix and whatever you want out of the whole lifestyle design thing, it doesn't yeah. mean you know, one way or the other. You could, definitely, you could definitely have both. But yeah, I look yeah. forward to seeing what you, uh, what you come up with over the next year or so. Yeah, definitely. I'm just having, I, would, I just want an office, maybe, you know, I've rented out for a short period of time. Like I saw some guys, they just rented an office in Europe, you know, for like a number of months just to like yep. base out of there. They got their little team and like rented out like a whole, like almost a whole floor, you know, put yep. up like a little logo and just had yep. like living that life, you know, have like you can get team. so much done. Yeah. 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 Anyway, that's, that's one thing that, uh, I thought was really cool. Um, but, uh, yeah, man. Um, I, and obviously guys, you can check them out at dropshiplifestyle.com. I guess one, one final thing like, um, about dropship lifestyle, like the actual course, like mm -hmm. what is it, what does it look like? Is it a, for people that don't know, is it, um, is it just a one-time join? Is it a membership? Is there yeah. like group coaching involved? Is there one-on-one -on -one coaching involved? Um, yeah. obviously it's a whole video course, but yeah, what does it look like uh, nowadays? Yep, it's a it's a one one time payment to to enroll on it, and it's a series of seven modules. The modules go through everything from niche selection to automation, and basically take you through via screen shares step by step exactly what we do. Um, I update it at least once a year. So this year, I think it was in end of November that like I every single video was refilmed, showing what's working now, what we're using now, and then um, there's a 
bunch of other things that we do include, like different bonuses that just dive deeper into some of the topics. So there's a course that everybody gets that's about how to run Google ads for e-commerce. That was just updated. There's a course for how to run paid social traffic. So Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter. Um, that's like, you know, a 30-hour course just on that. There's courses on doing business abroad. There's courses on outsourcing and automation. So all that is in the members area. Um, I also do a, a group coaching call every month where whoever wants to hops on. It's like a Q&A. They ask me whatever they want. I share my screen, show them the answers and how to do it. And then we do have private coaching available, but that is um, that is a paid thing. And just the coaches are people that have been through Dropship Lifestyle and are doing at least 50000 a month in sales. It's like two ninety seven for four calls a month with them. Nice. Sweet. Yep. Um, well, yeah, you guys can look out for uh, links below this video or if uh, you're listening on your favorite podcast app, you will also find the links in the description. Um, but uh, yeah, really appreciate it. I uh, really appreciate you coming on. That was a long time coming. And yeah. uh, like I say, man, I'll, I'll, I'll thank you till the day I die for putting on that retreat, man. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. Cheers. Yo, thanks for watching that video till the end. If you liked it, I guarantee you're gonna like the hundreds of other videos that I have on this channel. So right now I would like to ask you to click that big ass subscribe button right now. It's totally free. It's just like following me on Instagram. It's just gonna make it a little bit more likely that YouTube suggests my videos to you down the road. And if you get bored of my face in the future, you can always just stop clicking on my videos and they will stop showing up as often. So thanks for helping me get to 100K. I'm going to get back to work and I'll see you on the next video.